Okay guys, so what we're doing today is looking at portable generators, uh, a little bit how to connect them to your home, but primarily what we're going to talk about is how to properly balance the load on the generator so that you have the least amount of troubles and so that you're not having to constantly go out and fiddle with the circuit breaker, resetting it. And so for me, I like to do this stuff ahead of time you know before there's a storm before there's a major emergency because you're always shuffling around trying to get things going and and I don't want to be having to think about these things then so let's take a look at it and uh, I'll show you how I do it um, so here is a common layout of a generator outlet panel um, you've got two outlets on the left that are part of one bank of power uh, the two outlets on the right are part of the, the second bank of power. And both of those are on a circuit breaker. So if either one of those trips, uh, at least on my generator here, it, it trips the entire circuit breaker for both legs. Uh, some generators have a separate breaker for each leg. Uh, just kind of varies with generator brand. Now the connector to the right is a 30 amp connection but it's still held to the same restriction of the circuit breaker which is 20 amp on most generators. This is how I personally connect my generator to my home. So I have a large cable that connects from the port there on the generator to a connection on the outside of my house and then that runs to my breaker panel. Now taking a look at my breaker panel uh, what I have is a mechanical interlock system. So we can briefly take a look at that and I'll show you how mine is set up. So I won't go into too much detail on these. There's some videos out there on how to install them. But basically, uh, you can probably tell that there's no way to have your generator feeding breaker on at the same time your main breaker is on. And, and that's just so that you can't back feed your generator onto the electrical grid and potentially harm a, a line worker or someone. Now what we want to look at is how to balance the generator load so that we're not having to constantly reset the breaker on the generator. And so let's get right into it. Okay, so you can see we're here at one of my outlets here in my home. And what I've done is basically we're going to make any outlet, just pick any outlet in the home, um, preferably one that goes to something, uh, something fairly important. Uh, in this case, I'm using the outlet next to my hearth. That's what runs my blower on my stove. So that's something I would definitely want to be able to run in an emergency when I don't have power. So you can see what I've done. I'm, I'm making this outlet my starting point. And what I've done is just put a little red dot on both of the outlets. And so we're going to call any outlet with a red dot, we're going to call that the A leg. So what we'll need is just a couple markers. I've got a red marker and a black marker. And so our black marker is going to be the B legs. And the A leg is going to be... Uh, red of course like I said. So what we're going to do is use this outlet for a frame of reference to all the other outlets we check. As most of you know uh, between the two legs of power that come into your breaker box you're going to have 220 volts or 240 volts between those two legs and then you'll also have 120 volts between either of those legs in neutral. So what we're going to do is plug an extension cord into this outlet and then we'll move on to our next outlet and I'll show you what we do there. Okay guys, so now we're at the next outlet that I want to mark to determine whether it's on A leg or B leg. And this particular outlet is in my one of my mechanical rooms where my water comes in and I have a sump pump down here. So that's very important. I want to be able to run that, especially during a bad storm. 
So what we're going to do now, I've got the extension cord here from the previous outlet that I marked with a red dot, which is an A leg, or what we're going to reference as an A leg. So what we're going to do now, we're going to use a multimeter set to AC, and you'll see that it's the little squiggly line instead of the straight line for DC. We're going to use the little squiggly line above the V for AC, and we're going to set it to the highest setting that is still above the highest level we're looking for. So we're looking for 240 volts. We want to make sure that we're on a scale higher than that. In this case, I'm using 750 uh, volts, which is the highest AC setting on this particular meter. So you're going to see what I'm going to do. If your outlets are wired correctly, your small port will be the hot, the large port will be the neutral. Now, when someone hooks up your outlets, some people do unfortunately hook them up backwards and reverse the polarity. So we're gonna check it both ways in case that's the case. So we're gonna put our meter lead into the small port of the extension cord. And then I'm going to go right here into the small port of this outlet. And this is a weather resistant outlet or a waterproof outlet so it's a little more difficult to get in here what we may have to do is actually pull this out yeah we'll pull that cord out to the sump pump so we can hook onto that so you can see right there on the meter from hot to hot now i've got 245 volts so we are definitely on an opposite leg. We are on the B leg now, not the A leg. Um, so now what we can do, you can see I've already marked this one before with a black dot, meaning that it is a B leg. So that one's all taken care of and we'll move on to the next one. Okay guys, so now you can see we've moved on to the next outlet. And so what we're gonna do is basically the same thing. Uh, I'm going to take our meter probe, put into the hot on the extension cord. Then we'll go into the hot of the outlet. Now you can see on this one we're showing zero volts. Now what that tells us is that the two hots here are at the same potential. So we're on the same leg here. So this is another A leg outlet. Now if we want to verify that, we should be able to move the probe over to the neutral and we should see 120, 110, something in that neighborhood. And you can see we have 121 volts there. So we are definitely on the A leg. So what we'll do now is take a red marker, put a red dot on this so that we know in the future that this is on the A leg. Okay, so once you've got your outlets all marked in your home, now you've got to kind of lay out, okay, how am I going to connect these loads so that I don't overload either leg of power on the generator and so that I'm not having to constantly reset the breaker. And so this is an example here. And this may require you to use an extension cord and plug something into an outlet you typically wouldn't use. So that's something else to look at. Uh, now our next example here is if say you want to use your water heater for a little while you need to take a shower need to do some dishes most electric water heaters are around 4500 watts and so that's going to be the only thing you can run because it's using both legs of power it's a 240 volt water heater and so uh, aside from maybe one or two small LED lights uh, that's going to be all you can run and then once you're done with that you can resume normal operation and run some other items as well so that's it guys um, I hope this video helps you and I hope this will help you get ready uh, hopefully the storms and power outages are few and far between but hopefully you'll be ready if you do have one thank you guys so much for watching I really appreciate it if you like the video hit the thumbs up and subscribe for my future videos and as always I appreciate any comments or suggestions below we'll see you next time